This is day two of the new lathe. The manual says to cut four pieces of wood three quarter inches thick and ten inches long. The pieces of wood are used to protect the lead screws and the DRO scale while you're lifting the lathe with lifting straps. Next, move the carriage as close as you can to the headstock and leave enough room for the strap. Now I can unbolt the lathe from the pallet. Now it's time for the lifting straps. It was a little tricky finding the balancing point. I used to come along on the tailstock end so I could adjust the lathe to make it somewhat level before I lifted it to put it on the stand. I also put a rag on the ways to protect them from the excess chain that's hanging down from the come along. Because of the location of my lathe, I had to come in at an angle. I also had to be careful raising the lathe because of the backboard on the forklift it gets real close to my garage door when it's open.
Now I'm just checking to make sure all the bolt holes line up. The manual says if you ever plan on using coolant to make sure you silicone around the base of the headstock and the tailstock. So while I had it down low, I marked it with a magic marker. Now I'm going to lower it down just before it gets to the silicone caulking and then start all the bolts. Now I can finish tightening all the bolts. Now that it's all anchored down, I can remove the straps. Here again I have to be really careful because the backboard on the forklift gets real close to my garage door when it's open. So I have to maneuver around a little bit to be able to let the forks down. Now it's time to remove all the protection and install all the handles. I also cleaned up all the caulking that squeezed out when I set the lathe down on the bed.
Well, I'm done with the forklift, so it's time to send it home. I'm glad I had it. Now it's time to wire up the lathe. I'm using 10 gauge SO cable. I ordered the lathe with a 220 single phase motor. So the white wire I need to wrap with some black tape just to indicate that it's a hot wire too. The splash guard on the back of the lathe came pre-drilled for the light bracket, but I wanted to move it away from the chuck, so I'm going to move it further down. I noticed when I moved that bracket further away from the corner of the splash guard, it got real flimsy, so I made a brace to stiffen it up. You can see before I put the bolts in at the bottom how wobbly it is. So now with the bolts in at the bottom it's nice and sturdy. I did the same thing for the DRO mount. Now that I have the light wired up in the control box, I'm done with this part. Now all the other wiring is complete. I added a lightweight spring to hold up the cables for the DRO, just so they'll have free movement, not drag on anything. It looks like they gave me the wrong hardware for the doors. But rather than call them, I'll just fix it myself. It's an easy fix. I just eyeballed down the edge of the door and put a mark where I need to bend that bracket. So I just duplicated the same thing for the other bracket. Now it looks like there's too much play between the handle and the bracket. So I added a washer behind the bracket.
I did the same thing on the door on the other side. The adjustable carriage stop has set screws so you can adjust the plate on the bottom that locks onto the ways. You want it to fit as square as you can when you tighten the locking bolts. Adjust the set screws so it fits flat on the bottom of the ways. I replaced the tool post that came with the lathe with a quick change tool post. The tool post from Precision Matthews came with a, an assortment of tool holders. The manual says before you run the lathe the first time, check the indicator mark that's on the cam lock on the chuck to make sure that the notch is between the two arrows. And on this one you can see that it's not quite. So I'm going to take it off and adjust it. This one looks okay. This next one is a little bit off too. You need to put some kind of protection on the ways when you pull the chuck off in case you drop it. To remove the chuck you have to release the three cam locks. You have to turn them counterclockwise until the dot lines up with the release indicator mark and you'll feel the detent. Make sure you hold on to the chuck when you do the last one so it doesn't fall out. To adjust the cam lock, remove the Allen head screw that locks them in place. I know this is one that was out of adjustment. So when you turn it, you can see an indicator line. So I just try to line that line up right with the edge of the chuck and make sure they're all the same, and that usually works. Now you can put the locking screw back in. With the locking screws tight, you should still be able to move the cam lock back and forth slightly. Before you reinstall the chuck, make sure all the surfaces are clean. Sorry about blocking the camera shot. I need to work on my camera skills. When you first put the chuck in, don't over tighten all the cam locks the first time around. You want to make sure they all get seated properly the first time around. Then you can come back and snug them all down. Now you can see the notches between the two arrows on all the cam locks. I did some rough leveling with a standard level. Now I need to use a precision level and two 
precision ground one, two, three blocks. The headstock and the tailstock are both equally off. After about an hour of adjusting back and forth, I got the headstock dead on. And I got the tailstock about a half a digit from being perfect. It seemed like I was chasing my tail trying to get it perfect. But I think within two ten thousandths of an inch is pretty close. With the chuck removed, the internal taper is a MT5 on the spindle. And the lathe comes with an adapter to go from a MT5 to a MT3 taper, which is the same as a tailstock. Now I can see if the tailstock is in alignment with the spindle. The manual says the quick and easy test is to use the razor blade method. Move the carriage up as close as you can get it to the headstock. And then move the tailstock as close as you can get it and lock it down. Hold a razor blade between the two centers and then adjust the quill to trap the razor blade and then lock the quill. The manual says looking straight down from the top there should be no offset in the razor blade. I didn't get a camera shot from the top but it's perfectly straight. You can see from the side the razor blades tilted back just slightly. The manual says a slight vertical misalignment isn't near as critical as a side-to-side -side misalignment. So I'm satisfied with that. I'll make a part 3 video and do some test cuts with the lathe and see how it does. Thanks for watching.